Stay tuned because we're gonna take Sophia from this look to that look. All right, we've got Sophia's hair shampooed. What I used was a moisturizing shampoo and a moisturizing conditioner. I'm trying to put a little bit more love into it because it felt a little bit fuzzy, it felt a little bit frizzy, and we're seeing if we can put moisture in it to kind of calm that down. From here, I'm gonna work out the length first, and we're gonna dissect the head into quadrants. I'm gonna build a drop horseshoe into my main sectioning pattern, and we're gonna start to knock off the length of the hair. Her hair, as you can see, is already starting to naturally part with an offset profile part, or just a side part period, just a bit to the left of the profile. So I'm gonna continue to go with that because that's where her hair lives in regards to natural fall. And from there, I'm gonna comb everything just straight down, kind of just looking at the side profile right now, what hair naturally falls in front of the shoulder as what lives in her back. And that, again, is where we place our radius. So, just behind the back of the ear, and I'm gonna comb all that hair forward, and then we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the second side, so another radial parting, matching the previous on the right side to the left side, and then let's start to knock out that dropped horseshoe. All right, so once again, we're just trimming up the length right now. I'm gonna come through and point cut through this. I'm gonna go slightly pointed towards the left. And then I'm gonna come back and point the tip of the shear slightly towards the right. We create a zigzag pattern in the back, but with the principles of shorter pushing longer, this balances that out so it doesn't kick one direction or the other. There we go, so I'm gonna have her lean away and that just helps to get the shoulder out of the way. Left, right side of that section, center of it right here. Helps me to find my relationship to where that section would be. Fingers are flat and parallel to the ground. A little bit to the left. Coming back in again, and then just a little bit to the right. <laughs> All right, cool. So from contact point to where we left off at that center profile section, once again, slightly to the left, slightly to the right. And again, that just balances it out. So if I kick my shear one direction only, shorter pushing longer, it's gonna whip the hair a specific direction. So if you've ever had that client that they're like, oh, Trav, like, or whoever you are. Oh, my hair always whips out this way. Well, it could be based upon how you're point cutting. So just make sure that if you go this way that you come back the opposite direction and that neutralizes the movement of the hair so it falls just cleaner, straighter, and more of in a natural sense. So that last tiny little bit, I'm gonna refine the edge with a little bit more weight and structure to it because again, I've got less hair push grinch around the front of her face and it's hard to get the natural displacement of weight in it. So I wanna to try to create a little bit more strength in it. All right, perfect. So we're gonna create a contact point on this right-hand side. And now we're gonna cut from the right side, or if I should say from the contact point to the back of the ear on this right-hand side. So my contact point is right there. And once again, on this side, just like the other side, we have a little bit of that increase, or I should say decrease of length towards her face. So that could have been fringe that somebody cut at one point. <clears throat> okay, my friends, we just finished the length of the haircut. We're gonna bust into the layers right now. I'm gonna turn Sophia all the way around, and I'm gonna take a clip on this right side and pin it towards the center. And then I'm gonna take one on the left side and clip that across it into the center so that when I drop this section down, everything is pinned out of the way. So I'm not, I'm certain not to cut anything into the length of the hair. Okay, let's go ahead and start to create a profile section so we can start to build the layers in the back. I'm gonna use a technique called pivoting in the back of the head here. As we start to, well, first of all, let me back up. We're gonna create our guide to length, cutting from a shorter point to a longer point using concave layers in this profile section. From there, I'll take this section, split it in half, and we're gonna start to pivot from there. I'm gonna take this 90 to over direct from the intersection of the radial and the profile and we're gonna to start to cut from shorter to longer. I'm gonna take my profile section, split it in half. Half goes over to the right side, half goes to the left side. 
I mentioned that we are gonna be pivoting from the profile, kind of like a clock. Here's the center of the clock and the arms are gonna go from here or like we're slicing a pie. We're gonna take a diagonal forward section right there. I'm gonna back off the portion of the section that I don't need. And what we're gonna use is a traveling guide from that profile section. 90 to over direct. Finding my guide to length. Just a tiny little bit of hair to cut right there. All right, so we got a little wing right there. We're gonna take that out. It's again at 90 on base, just cutting from shorter to longer. This longer is gonna reach the base of the haircut. If we have any bit of the layers here, because we created this main section pattern that drape over the baseline that we've already cut now, we'll just detail that at the very end when we're blending our layers to length. On the right side, because I'm staying on base, I'm gonna stand on the right side the entire time. And as I use the clock as a sense of measurement, I'm standing somewhere between six o'clock and uh, three o'clock over here on the side. From the profile, as we pivoted that section with a diagonal forward parting, we're gonna comb the hair straight up again. And we have just that tiny little whip at the very end there to cut off. But we're looking for this inversion here. We're looking for a V sort of shape. And again, the longer points here on the side are what are gonna drape and connect the layers to the longest bit of her baseline, the, the length of her haircut. Okay, so see how all of this is moving back here? This is straight up and down. So 90 to over direct here. That's gonna become my guide to length. That's the over direction. But let's turn you back. I <laughs> told you I was gonna be moving you a lot. <laughs> let's turn you back and let's start to cut from shorter to longer. Left side completo. As we mentioned, we cut it flat to the round of the head. We've now built our layering into this haircut. So the second element of the three elements of every single haircut. Our layers were cut with a concave line. Shorter that falls from the profile of her head or the split, the parting of her head to the longest bit of length. Typically speaking, when you're building long layers, you're gonna do concave layers. So this is a really buttery haircut to watch and maybe reverse what we just did, watch it over and over again, because in general, this is really your money-making haircut. This is a haircut that regardless of what's going on with trend, technically speaking, is most long haircuts that have layers in it. Based upon how you exaggerate that shorter point to the longer point may be relevant to trends, but in general, what's relevant to trends is how we style it, and how we finish it, and what's gonna make it cool tomorrow is the next vibe that comes out. But again, the architecture of it, the, the build out of the layers are staying just the same. Now, if you're vibing with me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, click the notification bell so that you are aware of that next haircut that's gonna come out. And on that note, let's push right into our face framing. Everything is gonna be cut to natural fall, super juicy, really sexy, just underneath the chin and straight down to the bottom. No forward graduation, no elevation, straightforward like I said, let's go. All right, cool. So what we are gonna start with doing is finding the first curvature from her hairline. So I'm gonna take the bridge of the comb, rock that back and forth. As I find the first apex off her hairline, I'm gonna take a diagonal back parting right from there to the back of the ear. At the same time, I'm gonna throw a little safety net in there. I'm gonna take this piece and clip it out of the way. So that's the longest bit of length. I wanna make sure I don't cut this so deep that I start to cut that off. And then she doesn't have length in the front of her shoulders. Now I'm gonna use the slicing technique, so slightly opening and closing as I move through to help establish a little bit of structure in the fringe here. If I was to slide cut from top to bottom, I would be displacing every single hair slightly at a unique length, and that could thin it out that much more. So as you can see, these little channels of hair are grouping together, yet it's at an angle. That helps to establish weight in it. Thumb is on the outside of the uh, moving blade here. And just slightly opening and closing that as I start to work from top to bottom. Absolutely gone. If you like it, you're vibing with the haircut, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Click the thumbs up, hit the notification button, and let's get into the blow dry. This is a Kerastase product that was given to us. Uh, Sophia and I were just trying to figure out what it's called, and we have no idea. Um, but Fludis, Fludis, Fludisamy? It's Fludis, 
It's French, yeah. Fludissimi. Fludissimi. Um, we have no idea if that's how you say it. So if you can zoom in on this and in the comments, maybe give us a little bit. How, how, do, they, how do when they do, in a dictionary they tell you how to enunciate it? Yeah, like pronunciation. Pronunciation. All right. If you can help us out, help us out because we're lost. But here's the point. This is why we're using this unspeakable product. But why I'm using this mousse is because this is a strong holdy mousse. The great thing about mousses versus gels is that mousse is gonna give you the same hold as a gel, but it's designed for more volume. So it's designed to be an airier product versus something that puts too much weight on it. Let's say of a golf? No, that's bigger than a golf ball. What is that? Yeah, that's, that's bigger. Like a miniature baseball. So I'm gonna pause just for a sec. I'm gonna turn the dryer off. I wanna let you know I'm using a Babyliss Pro Nano Titanium Dryer. It's an excellent dryer. I've just started messing around with them the last couple weeks, and they are awesome. Or just a little tiny bit. It's perfect. <laughs> Sophia, we did it. We crushed it. We got the length trimmed up with a flat line cut to the round of your head. We built some new layers in it, which we didn't have any layers at all. So we built some fun concave layers in it. We strengthened the fringe by cutting that just underneath the chin that was all built to natural fall. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up, share our page with all of your friends, and click that notification button so that you get every notification of everything that we ever post. And until then, I'll see you in that next cut in that next class. Thanks so much, Sophia. You were awesome. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, you guys. Bye.